Hello, everyone. Welcome back. And hello, Tom. Thank you for joining me. A little bit unexpectedly, because uh, <laughs> the thumbnail shows Michael. This is not Michael. This is Tom, as the name says. Yes, Michael had to take Pumpkin to the vets. If you don't know, Pumpkin is our cat and the Scrimper mascot. He's been in a bit of a fight with a local cat. <laughs> and uh, yeah, now he's at the vets. But he's going to make full recovery, so don't worry. Welcome everyone who is waiting for us in the chat. Evil Coda back again. <laughs> Hope you're all having a fantastic few days. If not, the Scrimba community will make it fabulous. We can get behind that, can't we, Tom? Absolutely, yes. Good stuff. We can. I've just realised I'm already sharing my screen, which I don't normally do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, at least I am sharing it. That's good. Welcome all. Let us know where in the world you are uh, dropping in from today. I'm dropping in from sunny Wales. A bit too sunny, actually. Tom, where are you dropping in from? Also from that part of the world, sunny UK, and yeah. a bit too sunny, over 30 degrees. And there's that kind of day when, it's that time of day when the sun is just like beaming directly through the window and it's just too hot. Yeah, I don't exactly. know how it's going to go, to be honest, this coding in this heat. Yeah, <laughs> I think I do know how it's going to go, but you know, <laughs> hopefully it'll be better than I'm expecting. Wow, look at this, Quito, Ecuador, lovely, Nigeria. Yeah, I guess people from Ecuador and Nigeria are not impressed by our whinging about 30 degrees of heat. No, I guess not. Although, is it winter in Ecuador? Not sure. Mm, Let us know. Just... Might be. <laughs> yes, the Rocky Mountains. Oh, that sounds nice. Amsterdam. Iowa. Oh, and my newsletter buddy is back saying love your shirt, Leanne. Yes, if you don't know what I'm on about, allow me to enlighten you. Scrumba has a lot of things going on, so we like to keep you up to date with our newsletter. Uh, we tell you all about our live streams and podcasts, new courses, new teachers, anything else, and we share resources. So if you want to get involved in that, it will be landing in people's inboxes tomorrow morning, UK time. Yes, brilliant. Look at all these wonderful people. Um, thank you for coming, all of you. <laughs> Hi, Dave. Dave's there, of course. From Dave course. is there. Yes, brilliant. Um, yes, before I forget, we have a tradition here on Scrimba live streams, which is, if you are new here, please put a bunny rabbit into that chat. If you've been before, hit me with that tiger. We don't use this information, it's just for fun. Brilliant. So, Tom, thank you for stepping in at short notice, saving the day, because I did do one of these streams on my own once, and <laughs> I think I got the thing working. I don't remember what it was, but it was quite difficult. Because, you know, I'm managing the chat, or at least that's what I, that's my excuse. I'm sticking to it. Uh, <laughs> as well as trying to code. So, yes, very grateful to have your help. We, right. mm. yes, thanks for coming along. We're going to build a shopping cart of sorts. <laughs> and I've got some basic, uh, I guess, to do's here. Right here in the comments of the JS, which is totally not professional, but never mind. Um, let's start off actually with going through what's already in the code, which is not much really, uh, just my little H1. Uh, div items container is the ID. And another div, which will be the shopping cart. Usually shopping carts are kind of in, um, collapsible side bits aren't they Tom but for the sake yeah. of simplicity I will keep it um all on screen now we can imagine later it would pop up but yes not a priority um, not a priority now but you never know we might get onto it before I continue I must point out there's a lot of bunnies in the chat look at that amazing welcome to you all and there are also a lot of tigers in the chat 
So that's a nice balance. Welcome slash welcome back to you all. Brilliant to have every one of you here. And those of you watching in the future. Hello from the past. Yes. Wow, imagine. It might be the distant future. <laughs> a thousand years from now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Archaeologists trying to understand what this weird JavaScript thing was. <laughs> it's going to be like the hieroglyphs of our time. Amazing. <laughs> Do you think like some people get hieroglyph tattoos? Do you think people will get JS tattoos? Maybe. Maybe some people already do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I would have tattooed if I was going to have JavaScript. I no. Can't, can't sell work. log. Is this working? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of JavaScript, this is what we currently have um, in our JS file. Uh, again, not much. So I've grabbed the items container, which is where we're going to render all of the items in our items object, which is the things which will be for sale. Cat food, sparkling grape juice, and a murder mystery novel. You can tell I've got the weekend on my mind. <laughs> yes, um, so the to-dos I have in mind are, um, well, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself here. We need to have, um, first of all, render the items we have for sale. And yeah, with a button, with an add, item button add item to the basket and then we need an add to basket function where the item will appear in the basket and i want it to appear with a remove button in case you change your mind decide to go for sparkling apple juice instead maybe and we need to calculate the total price what do you reckon of those to do's tom i think that's doable isn't it that's I cool. hope so. Although yeah. the heat is <laughs> slowly rising. <laughs> we will see though. Yes, absolutely. Um, so first things first, I guess, is the rendering uh, function. I'm thinking a for loop for this, Tom. Any objections? No, we can go with a for loop. I mean, we could also go for something more exotic, but a for loop is it's a known quantity here. Huh? It is. Yeah, there is a was it a for for for, all? for of okay <laughs> yeah i don't right. think i've used that before yeah it's nice it's just a bit you don't have to mess around with all of the like i colon plus plus etc that you do with oh, really form. that sounds quite good for of oh, for, for all for of <laughs> yeah Loop. javascript just the easiest syntax really so this one uh yeah okay for that whatever of the list for in our case i don't know item always seems a bit generic doesn't it but in this case i suppose they are just items <laughs> yeah i suppose you could call it amazing things you can buy or something but yes <laughs> for now we'll go with this so for let i of i guess this yeah Console log I, that's a good start. That's okay. looking good. So now my idea is we are going to start at least within our HTML and then render each one onto the screen. And we want for that the name, the price and a button. So what Michael likes to do, which I usually object to, but maybe I'll give it a go this time, is um, he hard codes it into the HTML first and then he just finds it easier to do. Now, the one big benefit of doing this is when you use inner HTML in JS, it doesn't auto close the tags, at least in Scrimba. I haven't used it in VS Code recently, so I'm not sure, um, which is a bit of a pain. So on that basis, I'll hard code it here and then copy and paste it over. So yeah, it's like a good idea, actually. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I think so. But then I would say that. <laughs> so um, name will be this. This will be replaced with a um, template literal. And we talked a bit about 
what to do before the stream and Tom pointed out that it might be nice to have the price in a span because then we can style it differently should we want. Put it one pound, name one pound. Good. And then I guess a button underneath it. Yeah. Button. Plus, good stuff. We'll pause here to take a look into the chat. Oh, thank you, Dave. 4A of Element. Is that what I did? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> People are also suggesting for each. I don't have a great experience of for each, but some people like them. Yeah, I think in the um, style guides, like, you know, the um, Airbnb style guide, for example, they say go for an array method if you can, and if you can't, use a for of. Um, no, really? No, nah, I mean, a for of is going to work fine for us as well, but we could do a for each. Let's stick with four of. Okay. Sounds good. Um, yes, so we have that. Now, what I will do is put a little class on here. Oops. Oh, not on there. On here. The, actually, that reminds me. Alana has also said, what about the quantities? That's a very good point. Because <laughs> in our initial degrees, we'll only be able to add one of each. So that should be easy enough to increment slash decrement, I think. So yes, thank you for that. Class equals add button. And then we can add the styling in here, I think, already. Yeah. Add button. Because if there's one thing I cannot stand, it's looking at this default style on buttons it just grinds my gears I don't <laughs> so water and and then i picked out a nice little color palette earlier this blue and yellow affair uh background color is this Ooh. oh something's gone horribly wrong oh i in fact did want it on the button <laughs> <laughs> well, i didn't notice that at all <laughs> so close this no, that's no. more like it and i think uh color is oh alice blue nice yeah <laughs> and a bit of padding Thought point to five ends. Not point five ends. Now, this is not currently um, on the same line, which I would ideally want. What do you think is the best way of dealing with that, Tom? Shall we put that div that at the moment doesn't have a class? Should we give that a class and use Flexbox? I like the idea of Flexbox. Is there even an alternative? I mean, I guess there might be with messing around with the displays or something. Yeah, I think, yeah. well, probably if you put the button inside the P tags, but I... Mm, yeah. Mm, Let's go with Flexbox. There's no reason why not, but Flexbox seems classier, doesn't it? It definitely does. Much more flexibility that comes with it as well. So this... Um, is items container so in fact it would actually be in here um so we're going to call this one uh item element yeah okay and then back over here uh, do this in i have this thing i don't know if everyone does this I like the CSS to be written in the order that things appear on the screen. But yeah, it's nice, isn't it? It's a bit. The, the order of CSS is always something that I don't know. It's really hard to get it as logical as you want it to be. It is, and now I'm thinking about it. You might not always want that because sometimes you want you might want things further up so they're less important. 
yeah because it renders the last thing anyway um yeah <laughs> getting carried away yeah. here item element uh display flex and now it does this thing where it stretches the button to be an enormous size and the solution to that is uh, line items center yeah yeah <laughs> good stuff oh candy code good name <laughs> says i like it in order it's easier for me to read and make changes as i go along yeah that's right i find it easier to find things as well yes line item center max width Ooh. what about max width interesting let me know <laughs> or max height oh <laughs> would that work i don't oh, know curiosity <laughs> max height um i don't know 0.5 m's well it works <laughs> but then i think this is easier because then it's just in the middle isn't it yeah yeah i think you would still have to find it after max height as well wouldn't you yeah so uh i'm gonna put a margin <laughs> i'm hesitating because i'm not sure that's what i want no i want it on the button well, we could put a gap in the oh yeah on the bottom is cool. oh so a gap in in this yeah um do 0.5 mm -hmm. always type ml <laughs> just drives me up the wall okay yes so gap just um provides a gap between the things inside a flex box class basically um it's underlined in green because it's a relatively new feature and Scrimba just likes to tell us that it's new, but it is working, just to demonstrate. <laughs> yes, use the gap property, shall do. Next up, um, we want to render all of this HTML then as well, with the JavaScript, I guess. So I'm hoping I can just... You oh, took, sorry, took too yeah. much. <laughs> too overzealous there. This is what I want. Um, still took too much, didn't you? Did I? Don't we just want the item element? Yes. <laughs> it's a good job you're here, Tom. I don't know so, if it is. Uh, <laughs> so now we want to set the inner HTML to be this. How are we going to do that? Because ideally, what we don't want is um, to re-render it on the screen for each separate one. We want to update all of it and then update the DOM. That so should we make a function out of that lot and then in here have, yeah and then inside the function we can have a let to hold the string before the for loop we'll update that string and then at the end of the function send it all over to the dom in one go yes that's sensible um let's get rid of you put this here um actually i'll just move all of it so we need to add it to something, a variable, I guess. Yeah. Let um maybe items can... HTML or something. Items HTML is good, because then it's clear what it's doing. Yeah. Um could that be an array? No. Just, just, yeah, just a string. Okay. And it doesn't um, even, yeah. Like this, good. Yeah. And then in here, we want to update that, I think. Yeah. Items, HTML, dot. Um, mm, just no. plus the calls. What's that? Just, yeah, plus equals, I think. Oh, I right. Think. <laughs> 
plus <laughs> equals yes that makes sense and then we'll do the inner html later yeah back ticks unexpected token you ah because i didn't give it a name <laughs> render okay then so let's tidy all of this up a bit get rid of you and then at the end of this oh no yeah uh, here exactly yeah i think so gonna do items html dot oops mm. oh, 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 no we're setting the html or... oh no that's a... <laughs> we need to container, that's items containers yeah dot inner html equals items html And then, well, oh, and then call the function. Yes. Call it, yes. <laughs> Render. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Ah, yes. <laughs> I was like wondering why uh, <laughs> it had rendered the same one three times. But that's because we're still currently hard coding it. Um, pause to look at the chat. Text content um, would work, Nabil, but want it to render the button so for that reason i think we need html don't we tom or inner html uh, because that is all html isn't it if, if if we had we could do it differently i suppose and sort of hard code the html elements and just update them within a text but then it's more work for us yeah how would we do the button though mm. oh, i suppose hard coding with buttons as well could have, yeah could have just mm. hard coded button and then yeah. the event I'm gonna need to get an id probably in the button at some point for the event listener aren't we we oh, are no we might get away with it with this actually no i don't think we will because then um, we can do that with the class yes um one comment here rohit I'm a beginner at web dev, but I love to see the process of something being built. Well done for starting your web dev journey. <laughs> Best of luck with everything. And Daniel is asking, why is there a margin between the items? I don't have it on my IDE. Mm, uh, I mean, the gap property or, oh, sure. or the top bottom margin like this let us know <laughs> which margin you mean does it mean the margin like between the name one pound button and then the next one a sort of vertical margin i'm not sure because they say i don't have it on my ide hmm. but anyway uh let us know and we'll try to answer have we got, have we got padding on the p element potentially or no Oh, isn't it just the inbuilt one? Yeah, I guess so. I can't see what's um, higher up, but... Because we don't have anything. We didn't mm. set anything. Yeah. No, so... So I think it's just what... That is what talking about. The default. Elements. Yeah, the vertical margin. Oh, that's annoying. Okay. Sixteen. So that is one M, isn't it? I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, I have my general resets, and it's removed the margin. Ah, so I think Daniel is coding along, and that's why. Good call. So, uh, yes, we now want to programmatically render. Oops, JS. These so that we have these names and prices from items obj. So that's a simple, hopefully simple, um, <laughs> swap out in here, I think, Tom. Yeah, that's dollar sign and curly braces huh? and just stick 
items so now, now might be the time to not use I, because I always think I is a bit... Do you know what I mean? We've got... Maybe it should at least be item. I think item works. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> got. But that now we we're only so it'll just be item dot name because item now yes. represents each yeah. element in yeah. the <laughs> Item dot cat food cat. one pound <laughs> and then uh, item dot price not prints. <laughs> <laughs> and put the uh, pound sign there. Cool. Yeah, basically what we want. That's all of them in there. So, if I'm not mistaken, we have done this bit. Render the items we have for sale with an add item button. Done. I think we yeah. can take that one off. We can. <laughs> so, now, add to basket function. Um, make that when you click the buttons we want to yeah add the item to the basket here which I will make a bit clearer by uh, giving a bit of styling to it class shopping cart I'm not going to go crazy with this, so don't get too excited. <laughs> I will just grab this nice orange. sunflower orange <laughs> and go with border top. That did not do what I expected. Hmm. Did you save the HTML? Yes. Oh. Interesting. Have a look. Div class shopping cart. Uh, doesn't seem to know that it's <laughs> got that class, but it knows it. SS. Oh, there we go. Oh, it is there? Oh, okay. I think I know what it is. <laughs> Bordered. I've just given it that, but what I need to do is five pixels. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, we are currently... Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Alana, one pixel. Solid. Hashtag colour. Um, yes. We are halfway through. So, if it's okay with you, Tom, I will send this over to you and oh. <laughs> you will code the second half. No problem, okay. Right, incoming to your inbox now. Let's catch up on the chat. Yes. Tom's a great teacher, yes. Oh, <laughs> whoever said that. That was candy code. Alejandro is working on module seven right now. Yay. Excellent stuff. Hopefully I've shared my screen with you when you're ready. No hurry. Oh, yes. There we go. We're now on Tom's machine. <laughs> so the function we want uh, to add to the basket. But first, we need to add those event listeners to the buttons which are being rendered programmatically yeah i was thinking so i might just make my text a little bit smaller is that too small is that all right i usually have it at the maximum but I do. <laughs> what did i have today yeah, <laughs> yeah 24 24 wow <laughs> then if you make the mini browser a bit smaller it you'll be able to see stuff okay nice cool um I was thinking to, to try and avoid putting an, a load of event listeners and try and do it with one event listener. But mm -hmm. then we get a way of identifying this button. 
Mm. Um, so I don't know what what are your thoughts on that? Is that yeah, I kind of toyed with the idea of just adding the event listener to the container, but then I ran out of time to figure out how to just make it fire when it's a button. So my idea was just to grab that class name or grab all the elements with that class name. So mm-hmm. document dot get elements by class name uh-huh. um, and then grab the ones with add button and then add event listeners to those. Okay, should we do it that way? Let's see what happens. Okay, cool. So, um, should, we, should we just call these? Call it add buttons. Add buttons, yeah, they're not being. Um, so if we go for get elements by class name and add, that's smaller a second okay and now what should we go for a for each a for of a for loop oh i don't think we oh yeah we're gonna have to iterate over them aren't we We so? are <laughs> because that renders or that gives a html collection i think or maybe a node list i can never remember which one but I this, like, should we consult yeah. it and find out, or we're we not bothered? Uh, I don't know if it actually makes any difference because I thought no. we could iterate over it. So this one we could do a for each for. So we go for a for each then. Let's see what we get from the for each. So for the for each, we're going to pass it a function, and yeah. then uh, the function needs a parameter. So we should we just call that? btn for button yeah. and then let's just console.log each btn um, see what that gives us see what that gives us add button top for each is not a f- <laughs> okay that's gone really well. <laughs> um why is it not good question um, i don't see why it doesn't like that should we just hmm. try a four of again and see if it prefers that? That's a bit, I feel a bit like we're running away from that, but. It's fine. Sometimes it's best. <laughs> so what's that doing? Uh, nothing, actually. Why not? Am I being it's <laughs> than usual? Should something be happening there? Is it because oh is it because we haven't actually called render? Wait there. Could that be the reason for all of our woes? Yeah. Hey. So re- until we've called render, none of that stuff exists. So there's no point in trying to Ah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> If it was 10 degrees cooler, we would have known that from the start. Totally. Okay. So we've got our buttons. So um, now we've got that four off. Should we stick with it rather than going yeah. back to four each? So um, add event listener, huh? Click. So when the event listener detects the click, what do we want this function to do? That will be the add item to basket function. Yeah, should we take it out of the event listener and have it separate? I think so, yeah. Okay. What's it called? Add item... To, oh. well, to basket, to shopping cart, to trolley, if you're British, you know. <laughs> I'll go with cart. Yeah. Right. So then the question is, how are we going to handle adding it to the cart? Is it going to be an array of items to be bought or something? Because what do we need to know in the cart? We need to know the product name and the price, basically. So far, yes. And then potentially num of items 
as in the number of that item. So if you wanted three cat foods. Okay. So what? Let's not worry about that right now. <laughs> Let's just do the, the item name and item price. So an array for each or should we create an object? Could be. Yeah. Hmm. Could it? I mean. I suppose like the, you could create an object and then ha have one property in there which stores an array of items and another property which stores a total of prices. Yeah, I feel like that would be separate from the adding to cart function though. Hmm. That would be calculate total cost function. So for now, I think as Cuggly A <laughs> is saying, empty array and then just to push, push the, the item. item. That sounds... The item name we're doing at the moment. Let's start with that. Okay. <laughs> so, um, what do you say, transport items? Yeah. I mean, technically they're not yet bought, but... <laughs> uh, well, okay. carted items. Sorry, cart cart items. Yeah, that that works. Okay, cart items, and so then we need to access. We we need to know, obviously, which item was clicked. Um. Yeah. Because we're not doing anything. Because typically, I mean, one way to do it is to give each button an ID and then we could get that ID and... Find out which item it is from that. If the I yeah, I mean... Yeah, tricky. that sounds good. But then, because... But we don't really want an ID d to have two words do we like cat food or three words it's kind of well i suppose you can just do what is it dot join to yeah. fix them together mm. what about Some... a data attribute would that be a good use case for that do you think i don't think i know what it is sounds interesting i'm just thinking as long as we can identify The... Abdulaziz says yes. <laughs> yes, <for> what? <laughs> uh, the data attribute, I think. Yeah. Well, but, we um, Dave made uh, a point here. Wouldn't you have a cart array and add the item as an object to the cart? Which sounds sensible, I think. Add, add the items as an object? Yeah. Yeah, that does make sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, should we do that? I think so. Because then we'll have, hopefully, every possible thing we might need. Yes. Assign each item to each button. I think that's what we're doing. So if we set that up as an empty object... I think it's going to be an empty array into which we'll put objects. I beg your pardon, yeah. Good point. So... But how that's because these are the objects we want. So, but how, how are we going to link, for example, this button with this object? That's the missing link, isn't it, right now? I think we can just. I don't know if this is the right thing to do, <laughs> but I think we could just kind of rebuild the object with template literals. Rebuild the object with template literals? Oh, what, you mean in this function? Yeah. But then mm. how, how are we getting <laughs> information to build? Because at the moment... Hmm we're getting, I've just put that console.log of this, and then when we click the button, 
is just identifying it as a class with the ID of button. Mm. It's got no idea of which one it actually is. Yeah, but I'm thinking if we, should we try something? And this might go, this, this might end up being complete rubbish. But if we did data and um, item, Okay, and we set that equals to um, not sure if we need the inverted commas. Oh, actually, it slipped my mind. But then dollar sign and curly braces, and then also just go with item dot name. Not sure if this is going to work because if we try to console dot log this dot data set dot item let's see cat food sparkling grape juice murder mystery novel that's what we want cool good <laughs> andres also suggested use the index of items object as the id which we could oh, have done yeah we could have done that as well couldn't we hmm. um but this works yeah. yeah data attributes data attributes are quite nice just to like store whatever information you want in an element in an element i nearly said in an elephant there i think that's Dave, <laughs> dave's influence plenty of room there in an elephant so what <laughs> what are these i don't think i've ever seen this before these are basically a way of adding a property to an element that's just it's just like a general hold all thing you can put whatever you want in there um, and then you can just, so the syntax is that you've got data hyphen and then the name of the thing and then the value in, in next to it. In this case, we've got it obviously coming dynamically, but it could be hard coded. And then when you want it, you access it by taking the element data set and then the name that you gave it item and you get it back. And it's just, it's nice, particularly for when. You kind of want to just use an ID, but in something like this, we would end up having like an ID on the whole div and then the same ID on the button. And then you've got two elements with IDs on them, which isn't so good. Okay. So nice for that situation. Looks good. Yes. But I guess the, what we've got to do now, though, well, we could just push those to the array. Or we could... Um, use them to access this object so we've got like the price and everything mm, and then update the array yeah yeah i think that's probably best but let's have a quick look in the chat see what, see say. what ideas are coming through um Abdulaziz says uh, the array should be outside of the function. Is it outside of it? Why? Ask. <laughs> Don't know. You might, you might well be right. No. I, I'd be inclined to say that it should be in that function because it's not good to have too many global things. Is it? I could be wrong. Oh, but you no, know, I think you might be right because look, every time you call that function, cart items is going to be actually pre sort of, um, what's the word, initialized to an empty array. And then, so that's oh. going to be everything that's in the cart, isn't it? Now, I think. Yeah. Abdul <laughs> that's not what we want. Abdulaziz is, is on the ball. Yeah. So that should be global. And then we'll just add the um, item to it with plus equals yeah absolutely thank you for the good save there mm. so how are we going to get the i mean we could do something like find we, we could use like a, the filter method i guess to go over this array and return only objects where the 
data attribute item matches the name and then update the uh, new array with that object. Do you see what I mean? This sounds complicated. It does a bit. I'm just trying to... <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's see what other suggestions we have. And then I think we should try adding one. Yes. Yeah. Um, online of a thing. Obj would be better. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe it would be. <laughs> there we are. Oh, it's weird if I do that, isn't it? I'll look at it. We're in an infinite loop of Tom and Leanne's. <laughs> um, the object should have an ID property, says Ibrahim. You need to rename the property names from the object. Do we? Sarah, since you already have an array of the items, why don't you just use the index number of the corresponding items? I can see an argument for that. As much as I like this data item, using the index number, would that kind of solve our problems? Or I'm not sure. Um, I, so... But how are we going to get the... So they mean by changing this for a for each because then we've got the index parameter. Is that the suggestion? Could because be. the for of itself doesn't just give us the index. Yeah, let's do that then. Cuggly is shouting. <laughs> Redo the whole object property names. <laughs> We do them to what though? <laughs> Michael Limbus here. Best if each item in the uh, products array had a unique ID, but in this instance, maybe just use the array index. Mm -hmm. Well, should we refactor this to use for each and the index? Yeah, let's do that. That's what okay. people seem to be um, um, suggesting. So, <laughs> we will keep the audience happy. I'd like to do it with the filter. I think that would be cool, but okay. Um, items object dot for each. So we do function. And then we need the function. Uh, so be able to get the oh, this is not, uh, uh, not this one, is it? Oh. We need it in the, the buttons. Oh. Oh, I was going to add it. Oh, okay. Oh. You carry on. You <laughs> Ignore me. You probably know best. How is it going to help to do it in there? It probably won't. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. See where we get. Have we got probably missing various? Are we missing that one? Yeah. Okay. And then possibly, well, we could then just give these an ID because that would be a unique ID, right? Which would then have the index. Yeah. And then you could, well, you could, instead of using this, take the event.target or, or just use this.id, I guess. We just try that. See what it does. Zero. Good. One. Yeah, so that works. Okay. So if instead of that, we console.log, uh, what's it actually called? Item. Ah, no, don't do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> It wouldn't, yeah, I mean, we would get it back. Items, object, and then the index of it. Oh, it doesn't like that. Why? Why what did not? it say? Oh, wait there, no, I've done something. Daft, haven't I? Um, That's all of it. There we want this dot ID. That should do it. There we are. And then we log out murder mystery novel. So now we get the whole object and then we can push that to cart items. That Yay. <laughs> Radical coder says, I think the index is the way to go. Data item index would be the fastest way uh, to associate the button with an item. Ooh. Is that the same radical coder who made a scrimba course? I think so. <laughs> Hello, radical coder. Yes. Okay. Item. Here, cart items dot push. And should we just log out cart items to make sure 
We're... Oh, this could be quite a good time saver. Also, you can turn the HTML collection into an array with array.from, your cool elements, or even just the spread. Should we do any of that? What's happened? Is it working at the moment? If so. It, it is working, yes. Um... <laughs> if it ain't broke. In fact, if we just put that in there, then hopefully we should now just see that cart items is being... Is that going to work? No. Why not? What? Um, it is probably working, I think. But then Press why the not? Oh, no, it's not. Oh, yeah. I just hadn't saved it. That's why. Yeah, so on each one, cart items is getting bigger and bigger. Good. And so now... Loads of products if you want loads of cat food. Which I usually do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, I guess um, we want to render it underneath the stuff you want to buy. Yeah. So should we should we return that? Mm -hmm. We could. How about if we set up a render? What's this going to be? Render cart function. Yes. Um. Do we actually need a separate function though? Because all we're going to do is, um, I guess, add the latest item into what's already rendered. So I think is that just going to be one line of code, potentially? Sorry, we're going to say that again. We're going <laughs> to <return. laughs> well, All we're going to do is add the latest added item to the <laughs> array. So it's just going to be like plus equals new so item. Which array, sorry? Mm, cart items. That's what we're doing already, right? We're pushing each one to cart items. But now we need to take cart items, iterate over it, and render out um, the stuff. Right? This sounds really familiar to what we've already done. Yeah. So I suspect it might just be like one render function, which you could then um, put things in to render the either the things for sale or the things in the cart but i think for the sake of simplicity to answer your question yes let's just do render cart items as a separate function for now <laughs> we probably could couldn't we because we could pass in where we want it to be rendered as as a parameter and reuse that function mm -hmm. do you think or do you think oh. that's something that we would do on a refactor I would be inclined to do it as a refactor, yes. Okay. So we'll go with render cart. Is that, if, if you think that's a good idea, if, oh. See what happens. Because so, I'm now we want to iterate over cart items, huh? And produce basically, as you say, something like this. So we are actually going to end up exactly copying it well as that function is only called render maybe we should just reuse it mm -hmm. chat says um i think you should push only the items index not the whole item data then you would display the cart you use the filter on the items object that's what tom was saying earlier yes but we've committed to this now so. <laughs> <laughs> too far I would call a render cart function from the add items to cart. Yeah, that would be. Yeah. That would. Def yeah, yeah, you're going to have to call it from there, yeah. there, aren't you? Yeah, that's the problem, actually. When you call. Mm, no, maybe it wouldn't be a problem. Make it work, then make it beautiful. That is a very good sentiment to yeah. live by. At least do the first one, huh? But then Carl says a separate function would be good since each uh, time an item is added, you would need to re-render. That's true. There are going to be complexities of it, aren't there? Yeah. Should we go with the separate function and then we will? Yes, I think. So we had 
we have all that code? No? Okay. <laughs> I thought we... Yeah, we did. So, um, we want to iterate now over car items. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it might be useful just to keep all of that, right? And now, have we got a div set up for the stuff we want to buy? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Shopping. I do shopping. Have, have we taken control of it or not? No. No. But if we take that one. I think we're going to have to move the H2. The H2? Um, that says stuff you want to buy. Otherwise, it might break things. Because that's currently inside that div, which I yeah. probably it's don't want. The outside of it. Mm -hmm. mm, we've lost the orange line, but we, we can deal with that. Deal with it later. Yeah. Um, what were we doing? Shopping cart. And we haven't called that function, actually, have we? So if we call it in there... Shall I try adding cat food? Yeah. Oh, oh we're going to <laughs> of course. But we want that now just to be a minus button, don't we? Are yes. we going down that road? I think so. We've got three minutes remaining. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Should be enough. <laughs> Well, I think that's not bad that because we can add stuff to the cart. Yeah, look at that. And actually, I was thinking that we would have to do something. Yeah, no, no that makes sense. Yeah, cool. Brilliant. Cahill says, what an awesome concept. I love this and hope that you continue doing similar projects. Scrimmer is great at breaking so many learning norms. Yay. <laughs> a suitable noise for this this one <laughs> that wasn't a suitable noise um dave is asking is there a link to this scrim sure here it is so you can uh, play around with it and have some fun well we basically did at least some of what we said we were going to do <laughs> so i'm quite pleased with that tom how about you that is pretty good, isn't it? We haven't done the remove from basket or show the total price. Should we show the total price quickly? That shouldn't be hard, should it? Do you think? Yeah, let's do it. I say, but that shouldn't be hard. But, <laughs> um, so I guess we just want at the bottom a paragraph called total price. Yeah, we hard code that bit in here. Um, yeah. ID, shall we, for now? And... Yeah. But now we have to do something a little bit clever, right? Because we need to iterate over car items and add together all of the prices. Oh. Um, array yes. widgets, do you reckon? That rings a bell from a previous Grimba Challenge Week. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. So ideally, it would have its own function, but should we just see if we can... So we've got card items. Should we say const total equals car items dot reduce... And we return, oh, each item, I'm guessing item, oh, index item, and then index plus item dot price. And then, is this, am I speaking rubbish? Yeah, I might be. Mm, no, it looks sensible. Does it? Okay. 
I'm not sure I know anymore. Um, <laughs> then down here, we would just took a price that we could set the inner text huh, to total. Um, oh, object, object. <laughs> Bjorn says reduce method. That is, I think, what I used before once. Yeah, well, that's what we've got. Oh. <laughs> I think I don't know why I've called it index. That should be the accumulator and the current item, but I mean, same difference. And then we just want to return the accumulator and the... Oh. Ooh. Shouldn't that be total? Mm, what? Sorry. Return ack plus total. Because here... My syntax on the reduce is really wonky, isn't it? Because I haven't used it for ages. <laughs> we could yeah. possibly... But if we use total, then we could probably just do that with a for each. Um, mm, mm. JavaScript array reduce. Um, so that would subtract all of the numbers. Subtract. All oh, right, because of this. Yeah. So what do you have? Total number return. You forgot the initial value after the callback action, says Abdulaziz. Oh, you forgot the initial value after the callback action. Bjorn says accumulator should be set to zero. Okay. Should it? I feel like if we're in a normal temperature, this would make so much more sense. <laughs> <laughs> right. I used to write this so often, but I just think no, because we're not we're not telling it. Do we need to do so? Oh, wait there. Right, initial value zero. And then set that to array reduce previous value, current value, return previous value plus current value. And then that's. Should we <laughs> cheat and do it with four each? Because we're running out of time. Yeah. Just thinking. But Andres says as well, set the initial value to zero. Well, what is the in initial value? <laughs> but I think the problem is we're not pulling in. We've done this all wrong, haven't we? And as as you say, if the temperature was cooler. Let's blame the temperature, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, I do think it is turning my brain into mush. <laughs> total equals zero. And now we do... Um, Right, items dot for each item and then inside there we just say total plus equals item dot price one, one three, three. yeah like we we've we've massively we should persevere with that array reduce, but it's got to the point where it's going to get embarrassing. So, I mean, it works, so that's what it works. it works, and we can Google that later. Totally. Well, thank you all for coming to our stream, very enjoyable. Thank you for coming as well, Tom, on a warm and yeah, humid Friday afternoon. <laughs> much appreciating you dropping by there um if you enjoyed this let us know in the comments and by hitting the like button and you might also want to subscribe because we've got more live streams coming right up on wednesday 
Michael is joining me to bust some tech jargon. If you ever get sick of looking at random newfangled words and weird acronyms in the tech world, this is the stream for you. It's a live Q&A session where we're going to clear some stuff up. And after that, we've got an introduction to GitHub Desktop with new Scrimba teacher, Treasure. And I've just remembered another one, which I will now make public. Well, it's already public, but it's not very um, prominent, I suppose. And that is, you have asked us repeatedly for it. We're finally delivering. <laughs> Michael and I, next Friday, will be discovering React. Yes. <laughs> live on the stream so if you want to see us fail epically with react i mean totally smash it with react <laughs> come along to this stream yes Ooh, whitley treasure heather was a teacher at treehouse so glad they're at scrim burn out as are we thank uh, you for yeah a lot of fun treasure i think really really good um scrims on github they're actually really interesting I should mention those scrims. They are in the front-end developer career path. Treasures recently um, launched this section here, setting up a local dev environment, and this part here, all about um, branching and pull requests with GitHub Desktop. So yes, you can check out the front-end career path right here. Well, I guess that's all we have time for. Well done, guys, and thank you for sharing the learning experience, says SG. Thank you, too, for coming along. Any closing thoughts, Tom? Um, yeah, Google how to use Array Reduce. That's my mm. closing thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's oh, my man. task for the weekend. Yeah, and stay cool. Definitely. Stay hydrated. <laughs> cool well we will see you next week or at least i will and wishing you all a fabulous weekend i get better to pumpkin oh yes thank you very much see you all later bye, bye. <laughs>